I'm Peter Block in Chicago at the AHA annual meeting for On the Scene. With me is Brian Halliday from London, and Brian has done an interesting study concerning cardiomyopathy and heart failure. And the question, obviously, for many of these patients is, if you're better and feeling better, can you stop your medication? So, Brian, that's the nuts and bolts of your study. Tell me what the study was, how you did it, and then we'll talk about the results. So it was a, a pilot open-label randomized trial of therapy withdrawal in, in patients who had robust markers of recovery after initial diagnosis of dilated cardiomyopathy. So these are patients who are pretty sick to start with. On how many medications? One, two, three, four, roughly? Yeah, so, so most were on, were on two or three. Some were on one, some were on four, but yep. Okay, so these are the kind of clinical patients that uh, many cardiologists will see in the office. They get better over a few weeks or months as their cardiomyopathy improves with medication. What did your study show? And so, what did you do, I guess? So, so we, we, we randomized patients one-to-one to, -one to uh, come off therapy or stay on therapy. Those who stayed on therapy then entered a single arm crossover after they completed their follow-up where they also withdrew therapy over the subsequent six months. We found that around 40% of patients met the primary relapse endpoint um, within six months of starting therapy withdrawal. So it was, it was quite a quick accumulation of events in those who, who, who had therapy withdrawal. None of the patients who stayed on medications met the primary relapse endpoint. None? None, yeah. Okay, so that's interesting. So half the patients roughly, give or take, 40% relapsed within 40, I'm sorry, six months, 40% of them. Um, that's a significant number. And we were talking before, tell me what you think would have happened had these patients continued. Yeah, so I mean, this, this is a pilot study really to examine the feasibility of it. We didn't expect such a high relapse rate and um, it, it was in the short term and I think if we'd waited a little bit longer then you, you know, we would have seen a higher relapse rate probably. So you think probably three quarters of them, perhaps even more. I guess the question that no one knows the answer to is, why did some of them not relapse? And we don't really know the answer to that, do we, no, Absolutely not. I mean, I, I think for the 10 to 20% of patients who, who possibly do have sustained recovery, it's an important question for them to, to try to define who they are and um, try to identify who they are. Uh, and I think that's the basis of future research now, um, to, to try to define you know, what represents permanent recovery as these patients may be able to, you know, at least withdraw some of their medications, if not all. Okay, so, you know, uh, as I sit here and think about this, there's a fairly straightforward uh, message here, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. I think for now, we need to say to our patients that, that we recommend they stay on medications, um, and, and that needs to be our advice on, on, on until we get further research to say to say otherwise. Okay, so uh, for all the folks out there taking care of heart failure patients, if your patients get better and they're on their medication, Ryan, am I saying this right? Yep. Let them stay on it. Absolutely, yes. Yep. Thank you.